Hello, my name is Ethan Fan, and I will be presenting on the effect of urine acidity on the recurrence of UTIs after treatment with electrofulguration. I have no disclosures. Recurrent UTIs can be a challenging affair for many women, as repeated treatments with antibiotics can confer antibiotic resistance. For patients with antibiotic-resistant UTIs, electrofulguration offers a direct way to eliminate uropathogens. Via a scope, bacterial lesions in the bladder can be burned off, one study finding 65% success with this procedure at six months. However, long-term data for electrofulguration has yet to be studied in light of urine acidity. Low urinary pH is thought to create an environment unfavorable for bacterial growth by causing cellular damage from abnormal proton concentrations, thereby decreasing the rate of UTIs. Urine pH is, however, not necessarily stable, meaning an isolated urine pH from urinalysis may not provide the full picture. We tracked urinary pH trends and identified three groups, never below pH of 6, never above pH of 6, and fluctuating below and above 6. Our study's main goal was to determine if these pH trends would change the rate of UTI recurrence in patients who had undergone electrofulguration, with the hypothesis that having a low urine pH would lead to a lower amount of UTIs. If such an association was found, lowering urine pH may be a way to manage recurrent UTIs, especially in patients who have had recurrences after electrofulguration. In order to determine the patient's urine pH trends, in a previous study, we sent patients home with their own urine dipsticks and asked them to record their pH four times a day for a week. Again, three groups were identified. Patients were included in the study if they had a history of recurrent UTIs and excluded if they had not undergone electrofulguration. This is a table of the UTI characteristics of our patients with the low pH group highlighted in yellow. We had a total of 22 patients, with 6 in the high pH group, 5 in the low pH group, and 11 in the fluctuating one. Across these groups, we examined the number of UTIs treated, rate of UTIs, and urine culture characteristics, including presence of E. coli, multiple organisms, and antibiotic resistance. We also looked at UTIs treated within the past year and UTIs treated after 6 months status post electrofulguration. There are no significant differences found in any of these quantities among the three urine pH trends. This is the graph of the UTI per year against urine pH trend groups, with the low pH group circled in red. There is a non-significant decrease in the number of UTIs per year from the high pH group to the low pH group, as well as a large amount of variance in the fluctuating pH group compared to the other two groups. Thus, Although no significant difference was found between the urine pH group and UTI history, this may be due to an inadequate sample size to detect the difference. This study can power a larger one in the future to provide more conclusive evidence that low urine pH is protective against recurrent UTIs. The non-significant difference between low and high pH groups may also indicate the success of electrofulguration at preventing UTIs, as it is possible that electrofulguration decreases the number of UTIs to an amount such that the difference from pH groups is negligible. In conclusion, our study was unable to find a significant difference between urine pH trend groups and UTI history amongst women treated with electrofulguration for recurrent UTIs. Nevertheless, the study highlights the continued need to study the interaction between urine pH and UTIs in a larger group in the future, in order to determine if urine pH could be an adequate target of intervention for recurrent UTIs.